So this is my agenda. I'll be talking about my journey as a product manager. I'll go over the product life cycle definition, the PLC definition, the stages. We have four different stages in the PLC and some very well-known examples. I write weekly and you can subscribe to the newsletter at iusgen.com. I write about things about product management, new you know products and everything about the field in general. I'm also on Twitter if you'd like to connect. So this is my journey as a product manager. And every product manager has their own journey and then there is no one standard template that any of us can follow. All of us enter this field through various routes and all of them have their own pros and cons. Many people like to enter product management after their MBAs. However, I was fortunate enough to get into product management right after you know, my engineering. So I did my computer science engineering from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. It's considered the fourth best program for computer science in the world. During my senior year, I actually had an option to choose between writing you know, a thesis project in computer science or choosing, choosing the track of product management. I chose the latter. And you know, it has been a dream run ever since. In fact, before my senior year, I interned as a business analyst. And back in those days, a business analyst was your product manager. That was the title used back then. So that was my internship and I loved it absolutely. And I decided there and then that that was the field I wanted to go into. After that, in my first job, I got hired as a business analyst at Standard & Poor's New York. Again, a great experience at a great company. I was fortunate to be part of a team of product managers, you know, who guided me and, you know, taught me the tricks of the trade. I was fortunate to be part of a large corporation with set processes. So as a new person, I didn't have to, you know, struggle too much. I was, you know, a part of the system that told you what to do things. So I could learn while being part of the system. And after a few years at SNP, I decided to try my hand at a startup. So I was hired as a first product manager at a startup in New York. It was again a fantastic experience. Now at a startup, there is nobody to teach you. There is nobody to handhold you or guide you. You are the product manager. You have to figure out everything on your own from scratch. And it was again, a tremendous learning experience. My previous experience at a big corporate actually groomed me for this experience because I knew how things ran and what processes need to be set up. In fact, at the startup, I even remember setting up Jira from scratch for some processes. So it was that, you know, that basic. And after a few, uh, after, uh, you know, the startup, I moved back to India and this is my current phase. I joined American Express, a fantastic company with exceptional, you know, people and processes. And over here, I lead a team of product owners. And I guess my experience in st starting product management at the startup and learning the processes at a big company groomed me for my current role. So at Amex, you know, I have to, you know, be part of a system and set up new processes at the same time. In fact, mine one, was one of the first teams of product managers to be hired in Amex in India. And like I mentioned, I also write weekly at iusgen.com. So that was my journey. And, you know, if anyone has any questions, you know, we, please feel free to ask about my journey, why I did things the way I did or anything that you may uh, be curious about. So moving on. The product life cycle. This is a very important concept that all of us should be familiar with. And this concept is independent of what industry you're in. Every product, whether an app, a physical product or a website, goes through these stages. The stage duration and the curve type may be different for each product, but it must definitely go through these stages. Unless, of course, the product fails outright, which also I'll cover in a few uh, minutes. The first stage is the introduction stage. This is where you launch your product. And 
launching a product does not mean that you have to do a lot of fanfare or you have to do a big you know hurrah it can be a simple launch as well it depends on your budget your type of audience your product but introduction stage generally does not result in a lot of users you spend time building up understanding your audience the next stage is the growth stage if everything goes right for you this is where your product shoots up you have a ton of users in a short span of time and your product's popularity up is uh, you know growing day by day and this is the stage you want to really capitalize upon and i have you know i'll go more in detail this is just you know a brief overview the next stage is the maturity stage this is where your product is stable the market knows your product is considered a worthy competitor and it's generally the first choice for the for your target audience this stage does not result in you know a significant increase in usage mainly because you've reached your saturation the next stage is the decline stage now you may hear you know people talking about a fifth stage or a sixth stage they generally mean a refreshing a uh, refreshment of the product refreshing your product and reintroducing a different version but that is not a standard practice refreshing and in- reintroducing your product is generally considered by the wide majority uh, of the market as a new introduction so that is why i have not counted those fifth and sixth stages the decline stage is basically when your product rapidly loses customers and appeal in the market this could be because of various reasons and you know i'll cover some in a few but majorly your product has outlived its utility there are new or better products out in the market who offer a better deal to customers and every product has simply a life cycle that you cannot escape it's just how things are so that is about the product life cycle at a high level now i'll go over some details and again please feel free to ask questions about anything that you have so this is the theoretical or the standard curve for a product manager as a product manager you need to understand this product life cycle because the success of a product depends on you the product manager you are only and only responsible for the success of this equally important if not more important as a product manager you are also responsible for the failure of a product uh, life cycle if a product does not take off it fails for some reason if you are not able to meet this curve this graph you as a product manager need to understand what went wrong because not only success even failure is the product manager's responsibility so you need to think about this day in and day out you need to have this curve this graph in mind but remember not every product will have this exact graph and i will cover some examples that have a different graph uh, in a bit but i want to make sure that everyone has this image in mind as we proceed through the webinar your introduction growth maturity and decline your x axis is the time on market and y is your sales or growth the number of users so moving on the introduction stage now the introduction stage is practically the most important stage of the product life cycle you simply cannot expect to succeed in the remaining stages without a proper implementation of the introduction stage there are various strategies and those strategies depend on your assessment as a product manager and your product type there is no standard template that you can follow only you as a product manager know your audience you better know your audience like there is no <laughs> excuse if you don't you should know your feature set you should know your competition in and out you should know what they offer what is your competitive advantage and what do you wish to gain uh, from the market your product is in the initial stage you are trying to get new customers how do you do that you need to make sure that the product manager is not chasing profit you right only and only responsible for this so i thought there was some echo okay so 
um, yeah, I was saying that we should not focus on profit in this introduction stage. Your job right now is to build a loyal customer base. Many apps and websites these days offer a freemium version as a way to entice new customers. The freemium version basically means that you offer the product for free and for growing uh, usage or growing, let's say, uh, for new features, if people want to use additional features, they have to pay for that. So it's a freemium version. And a freemium version, more often than not, always, always includes a CTA, a call to action. What is it that you want your customers to do with your product? That should be clearly visible right there and then in the introduction stage. You need to identify your top selling features and you need to introduce that as a CTA. That is the goal in the introduction stage. So um, I want to make sure that, you know, all of us are fully uh, onboarded with this stage. So I'm going to go over a few examples. And those examples are pretty well known. You will know what those uh, examples are. But you, you may think that this example has been there for around a few years. That's okay. The introduction stage does not mean it lasts only for a few weeks or a few months. It can last for a few years. It simply depends on the type of product. A few, uh, an introduction stage for a few years does not mean that the product has failed. It simply means it has a longer gestation period. Now you as a product manager should know that and recognize that fact so you can accordingly convey that to your stakeholders. So I'll cover the examples now. So I have four examples here and let's talk about the first one, smart glasses. Smart glasses have been in the market for a few, I would say a couple of years now. We have the example of Google Glass. Even though that product didn't take off, it failed. But if you saw your news, I think uh, two days ago or three days ago, Apple is coming up with this concept, Apple Glasses. Now, the product category of smart glasses is at an introductory stage. Different competitors are trying out their own product and some will fail and many will succeed. We just have to wait and watch. But this category as a smart glass, as a product category is definitely very much in the introduction stage. Why do I say this? How many of us actually use smart glasses? Practically none. This is not considered an essential item or even item that you would uh, require in your day-to-day -day job. When App, uh, Apple came out with the Apple Watch, that was considered a new product, a smart watch, even though it was there in the market. But Apple Watch really captured the market and it became a thing. Oh yes, I want a smart watch. The next example is online healthcare. Again, this has been there in the market. We have all heard of apps that offer you tele consultation with doctors, but how many actually of us use it? We just prefer going to a clinic or to a doctor and just, you know, meeting face to face, but not right now. You avoid face to face meetings because of the current pandemic. This pandemic could be a turning point in the life cycle in the product life cycle of online healthcare. In fact, if you read any articles online about online healthcare, people are really gung ho about this concept because people are simply avoiding going to hospitals and clinics. How do you take care of your medical needs? You do online healthcare. You talk to your doctor online. People and in fact, even doctors are now getting more comfortable with this concept. So online healthcare as a product, I would say, may be entering the next stage of the product life cycle, which is the growth stage, but we're not there yet. The next example is virtual reality or VR headsets. This product has entered a niche market. Many gaming communities, many specialized communities do use this, but not at a massive scale. This is not like, all of us need uh, VR headsets, like let's say you need a smartwatch or you need a smart uh, phone. So I would say that this product has entered a niche introductory stage, 
it will take time to enter the growth stage. I also want to cover uh, just quickly the concept of niche markets. As a product manager, it is your job to identify your target audience. And it may happen that your audience is a niche audience and not a mass. You may not have a mass uh, targeted product, which is okay. Your job is to capitalize fully and reach the saturation of your target audience of your niche. Don't be, uh, you know, it's important as a product manager to not lose sight of the focus. You should not live in a fool's paradise. You should know that, okay, this is my goal. Don't be unrealistic and start comparing with, let's say, Apple's numbers or anything else. You need to be realistic about what your target is and then achieve that. The next example uh, for introduc uh, introduction uh, PLC is the flying cars. This concept has been around for almost a decade now. We've all seen YouTube videos. We've all seen, you know, articles and, you know, uh, news every now and then, oh, this company came up with a flying car, XYZ came up with a flying car. But it has not really taken off, pun intended. The concept of flying cars exists. All of us are aware of it, but it simply does not exist as a viable product category, which is okay. This is the example I was talking about earlier that your introductory stage can stretch out over a few years. It does not mean the product has failed. It is simply taking time to, you know, find its appropriate market fit. So these were the four examples. And, you know, if any questions, I'm sure we can cover them uh, maybe towards the end or whenever. Moving on to the growth stage. This stage is what every product manager dreams about. This is when you start occupying mind space. People go and choose a product, your product figures in their mind. It is a choice that they have to make. And your product is definitely one of the uh, options that they are considering. This is your dream scenario. Everyone wants this. Your product gets noticed. You naturally do not have to spend that much on customer acquisition as you had to do in your introductory stage. Your market costs, your marketing budget may be the same, but your acquisition per customer acquisition cost is definitely going down in this stage. There is organic growth. People recommend it to their friends. There is word of mouth growth and people write, there are reviews, positive reviews about your product uh, in blogs or articles or wherever. And there is natural organic growth. The next item is usage growing every day. Now, before I go to the next uh, stage, I want to make sure that you guys understand that this will not continue forever. You will reach saturation. So make sure you spend your time on growing usage every day. Do not let, uh, rest on your uh, laurels. Do not be complacent that, oh, my product is growing every day. It will continue to grow. It never happens. You need to realize that as a product manager and plan accordingly. People will like and recommend your product, but only till there is not a better alternative available. So moving on. Some examples of the growth stage. And these examples are of products that all of us are familiar with. Electric cars, for example, Tesla. It is there in the market. It may not be your number one uh, you know, top selling car globally, but not because uh, it is not available. It is because there are other barriers. The infrastructure for electric vehicles may not be available in uh, the area where you live, or the car may simply be out of your reach. I can't afford it, for example. I would love to, but it is something that occupies mind space, like I mentioned earlier. If you live in an area that supports electric cars and if let's say you have the money to buy a Tesla, it will definitely, definitely be a strong competitor in your mind. This is a, a classic example of growth stage where this product in the next decade will simply explode. The next item is your 
internet of things your iot devices think of a smart microwave an alexa enabled microwave you tell it what to do and it does it for you those products exist you have fridges smart tvs all of these exist in the market and they certainly are a strong competitor to traditional uh, appliances i for example when i bought my tv i made sure i bought a smart tv not a dumb tv if that's the other term but the point is that as a product manager you need to identify your traditional competitors and offer something better something that is future looking that will compel your audience to go for your product thinking yes this is the future internet enabled devices are the future why would anyone if at the same price point and same quality and same feature set why would anyone buy an appliance that is not internet enabled that is the question you need to ask as a product manager the next of course airpods but were apple airpods the first item the first earphones with that were wireless of course not the wireless category for earphones has been around for many years but what product really captured the imagination what product really made people sit up and take notice and take what really made competitors take notice oh i need to make sure that the i the earphones i bundle in with my phone are wireless in fact people are even copying the design of airpods that is the kind of impact airpods had on the wireless earphone market and a perfect example of a single product growing the entire category because of airpods the entire category of wireless earphones has you know really taken off everyone wants them the last example is not a traditional technical product not a software product i introduced this purposely to give you an example of every single item in your life that can fit perfectly in the product life cycle i am talking about organic foods this is not a software product it is simply a concept your food that is free from pesticides or preservatives or you know naturally grown organic this concept this branding of organic foods has really occupied the mind space of people living in urban areas who are millennials who are in their 30s they really love this concept they want to have only organic food but would you say that the vast majority of food consumed in the world is organic of course not this concept this category organic foods is in its growth stage in a very niche audience but it will certainly expand not only expand its uh, audience horizon but also its reach this is the example of growth moving on maturity this stage is very difficult to identify as a product manager you need to be on the constant lookout you need to make sure that you are aware of your metrics you constantly monitor your customer engagement your marketing costs your per customer acquisition costs you need to make sure where your product is it is very easy to get complacent and lose sight of your goal but you cannot afford to miss this stage this is when you've reached saturation with the target audience your product is known is considered one of the best in the market people are fully aware of your product the brand name is established when somebody needs to go and buy a product they know okay this is my number one choice but there is only so much utility utility for any product beyond which it stops being useful and it stops being uh, you know unnecessary in the unnecessity in the market so be on the watch out and the last bullet point i want to you know focus on that especially it is the most important concept in this stage the marginal utility trap what is that it basically means you artificially try to extend the life of your product by introducing new features that may not necessarily add value to that feature to that product you may think oh you know what 
let me offer a new color iphone offered a red color phone for example to extend the life cycle of one of their uh, genera iphone generations it didn't work offering some features or offering new you know enhancements may keep extend your maturity stage for a few months or for a few years depends on your product but it is simply no replacement for a new product if you feel your feature set your enhancements that you're introducing are good enough for a new version of the product go for a new version don't count it as a part of the existing product life cycle so that is what i mean by not falling into the trap of marginal utility moving on to the examples so these examples are pretty well known to all of us at least to me i'm from the 90s not sure what the average age of the participants over here is but uh, if they make you feel old uh, don't worry about it it happens to all of us so the first example is tv cable connection many millennials right now simply don't need a tv cable connection they have their you know you apply for a netflix subscription you go for an amazon prime subscription and that's it that's pretty much all you need cable connection has reached a saturation point in many markets and it simply will eventually go to the last stage which is the decline stage the next example is your fuel guzzling cars your gasoline diesel petrol cars in many 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 markets these have reached a saturation if people want to buy or replace their existing car the electric car that i mentioned earlier occupies mind space if that version if that option is viable and affordable people will go for it and similarly i talked about your iot devices this is the opposite example so notice how whatever is in the maturity stage a strong competitor is in the growth stage or the introduction stage your non internet kitchen appliances are definitely available all over the market many people still buy them but it depends on your market if you are in a developing market these appliances are definitely your number one go to choice however if you are in a developed market where such appliances have already existed in your family and a millennial or a new uh, you know a uh, person in that family wants to do a replacement i can guarantee that they will think of an internet enabled appliance as their number one choice the last category and this is something that all of us can agree with are your personal computers how many i had a personal computer at my home in the 90s and right now i don't i probably would do it in the store it somewhere but i don't use it i only use my laptops the category of pcs is simply on the way out it is something that we simply don't use or need anymore because better and cheaper alternatives are available in the market moving on to the last stage of the product life cycle is the decline stage many people think their product will never enter this stage because it's too good for the market that simply never happens i can give you endless examples of people falling uh, you know believing into that fallacy and they simply vanished nokia phones are your perfect example they were ruling the market and then they simply vanished from the market i actually have a slide dedicated to nokia and i'll come to that in a bit decline stage is when your profits and your marketing costs simply do not make sense as a product manager you need to be on the watch out your profits are declining your marketing costs will not be able to make sense you cannot justify that uh, you know if you own your company you cannot justify that to your stakeholders or if you work for a large company you cannot justify that to your bosses you will also have new products in the pipeline that you must have been developing alongside your earlier products now your pr products that are in the development stage will be ready to be moved to the introduction stage and possibly to the growth stage 
they will need your marketing budget and your budget is limited you will have to shift that budget from one product to another product at the same time your competitors were not sleeping they were fully aware and working hard to make sure that they introduce a better product than what you have in the market the competitors will undercut you they will offer uh, better features at a lower price point because they have been you know funded that way and they are only looking for growth and users at this point it always happens you follow that life cycle so will your competitors they will offer a fresh look and probably offer it for free or at a lesser price point premium versions you need to refresh your product if possible and definitely launch it as a new product not as a continuation of your existing product that will simply give you a misleading read on your life cycle moving on to the examples and uh, i think we're doing good on time as well these examples again all of us are familiar with cd dvd players none of us i'm sure use these right now and if you do it's an antique item we should preserve that <laughs> so think of floppies for example and if you're too new to know what that word means it's okay but floppies like cd dvd players or cd dvds were a thing a storage devices that simply died out cds dvds died out and now many people do use uh, you know your usb storage devices but those two will die out eventually everything will move to your cloud uh, spaces and you will have enough space available and at a reasonable bandwidth that you simply won't need hard uh, storage devices like your usbs or cds dvd the next example is your landline phones they still do occupy uh, a traditional role they have a definite utility but many families right now i know for sure each of them uh, will have a smartphone but the entire house will not have a smartphone uh, will not have a landline phone i beg your pardon this is a very common scenario these days and a classic example of a product that is in a decline phase and has not as many takers at its at as it used to in the earlier days the next example is video cameras this product if you read online in any of your articles was killed the product of video cameras was killed only and only by the iphone not only your video cameras in fact your music players your mp3 players both of these products were simply slaughtered by the iphone if you have an iphone or any other smartphone for that matter you simply did not need a video camera in fact there are graphs available online where you could see the drastic difference in the sales numbers between the two categories there's a direct correlation in fact the next item is for all you agile nerds out there uh if you're familiar with the concept of agile methodology then waterfall is of course some of that sorry i usually i just want to interrupt you a little bit because i think your presentation is not going forward now the list maybe can you check uh, no. with me or is, uh, it, is it all right Uh, what do you see right now? I see CD, DVD players, video cameras. Yeah, that's I'm I'm on that one right now. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. No, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the last one is waterfall model. Even though this model is used in traditional manufacturing industries, but the concept of agility has taken a front seat in practically all your industries. So moving on. is your failed product examples these products simply never had the product life cycle that i just described or could if you remember this it was a social network back in the day i personally think this was ahead of its time the audience the reach simply was not there for it to succeed as a social network and you know there are many reasons why a product failed and this is just one of the reasons i listed over here but i'm just giving an example of failed products google glass failed as a product but the category of smart glasses still exists 
maybe apple will do wonders we'll have to wait and watch google plus again an example of a failed social network this is a very good example for us product managers you will need to do one thing but do it right if you're doing 10 things and doing all of them uh, in a mediocre fashion you're not doing justice to your company or your product or even your profession as a product manager choose what you need to do choose your most important features and then focus on them make sure you get them right not uh, you know trying to compete with everyone in the market that simply is not possible the best and the most you know uh, the largest companies like google they failed in a social network they had in fact more uh, options for social network i think there was google wave for example and that many more such products they had all the marketing budget in the world they had all the best developers in the world but they still failed why because it was not their primary business facebook was doing this one thing and doing it right that's it again similar example amazon fire phones it launched a hardware product it simply did not capture the user's imagination it simply did not have uh, you know the focus required from amazon that uh, would you know push sales or make users uh, you know a compelling argument to go for this phone as opposed to its competitors moving on this concept is very important for all of us to understand it is the no one size fits all concept the, you will have products that simply will not uh, you know follow the traditional graph of the product life cycle that i showed earlier you will fail it's okay in fact before you get it right you will get it wrong a lot and that's okay you need to make sure you eventually keep on going and you will get it right. uh your graph will not match the theoretical graph it will take time to build a loyal customer base and finally you need to be on the lookout for change as a product manager you are responsible like i mentioned earlier for the success and the failure of your product nobody else is responsible only the product manager is responsible for success and failure be on the lookout for change have a communication plan ready have a marketing plan a new feature pipeline ready that is your job as a product manager this is a classic illustration of no one size fits all the basic product life cycle is what we've seen always however if it's a fad it comes and goes and no one even notices it there could be a sharp increase in users one day and next month it simply dies out nobody even notices it that's called a fad and you need to be careful of not falling into that trap you need to build a loyal customer base it needs to have a genuine use case that you are trying to solve fashion products um are slightly different they have a shorter life cycle but it does not mean that they don't fall into the traditional curve they do they simply have a shorter time in them this is the example i was talking about earlier nokia nokia was ruling the market it had everything going for it it had its own os it was also introducing your touchpad and your you know uh, touch screen models but and there are many studies available online the company simply was too complacent and simply did not do enough to capture the market it was too complacent maybe the management maybe the company in general they simply did not do enough to innovate and to keep on innovating to capture the audience another classic example is blackberry which all of us know also failed despite having a clear lead in the premium segment apple iphone captured the market and destroyed nokia and blackberry the next example is also an apple example 
Apple iPod. This curve is the classic product lifecycle curve. This is what we just discussed. Look at this curve. Take it in, just understand this curve. This applies to uh, even the iPhones, for example. So this curve is not talking about any one single iPod. It is talking about the entire generation, the entire set of iPods ever released. And that entire product category still fits neatly into this product life cycle. It had its introduction stage, it had its growth stage, maturity, and then it did have its decline stage. In fact, before it ended, Apple stopped reporting the sales number for the Apple iPod. This does not mean that the company stopped innovating or it failed. It simply had a new category in the market, your iPhones. A classic example of not falling into the marginal utility trap. Once you know a product category has outlived its utility, you move on to the next category, the iPhone. And you know what? The iPhone will eventually be replaced by something else too. So that's all I had. Uh, you know, I'm open to questions and I'm also open to connecting with any of you if you have any questions, you know, even after this webinar. Like I mentioned, I have, you know, a weekly newsletter on my blog, iusegen.com. If you would like to subscribe to that, you can go on and subscribe. I also am available on Twitter. If you'd like to chat and connect, you know, I'll be happy to do that. So that's all I had. Uh, thank you and I'm open for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ayush. You made some really good points, really insightful presentation. Thank you for that. So yeah, we have our audience and our participants asking you questions have been coming in. So I'm going to just start off. Yeah, by the way, we have all kinds of managers here. The ones who work with startups, the ones who are already, you know, more advanced, some are trans transitioning, you know, we have guys from India, from Chicago in America, so okay. from all over the place. So I'm going to start with the first question. The, it's asked by Karan Chawla. Um, if there is a constant growth, will the ma maturity change? If there is, did you hear my question? Sorry, can you repeat that? Yes. Um, if there is constant growth, will the maturity change? Okay. As a product manager, you need to make sure you understand your maturity stage. What does that mean? Your audience, your target audience is finite. There are only so many people who will need your product. So no matter how much you grow, there is always an upper limit, a ceiling to your product's uh, you know, utility for a specific audience. You may never reach this audience, but this target will always be constant. You may start tapering off at a lower level, but your final mature uh, saturation point will always remain constant. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then uh, Utkarsh Sharma is asking, is the freemium version only delivery model under introduction stage? Uh, is the freemium version, sorry? Is the freemium version only delivery model under introduction stage? No, there are many models available and it depends on your product type. For example, if you have a physical product, you launch a watch, you launch your phones, you launch your whatever, a Fitbit, a freemium version is not possible. What is possible is a product priced at a lower price point, but your marketing is for the highest paid product. For example, your Apple iPhones. The advertisements are always for the most premium version of the product, but they also have a lower, slightly lower priced version available. Why? They want to capture the audience. They want to position themselves as an aspirational brand that yes, that is what I want, the most premium iPhone. But if they cannot afford it, there is a slightly lesser version of it available. So there are many models available. It simply depends on your product. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, Durga Prasad is asking, what is the maximum time a product can be in, in introduction stage? There is no uh, set timeline for this. Uh, as I talked about my examples, it can last from a few weeks to a few years. 
and i'll give you again i'll repeat the examples the concept of flying cars has been around for you know almost a decade now if not more but would you consider that to be in the growth stage definitely not it is still in the introductory stage and has lasted for many years at the same time the concept of smart glasses has only been there for a few years but wait for the apple glass maybe that may uh, suddenly uh, cause an explosion in this category and the entire category may shift from introductory stage to the growth stage mm -hmm. thank you prasad b is asking how is the length of a product life cycle determined does the saturation means uh, that the demand for a product is declined sorry what's the second part uh, does saturation mean that uh, the demand for a product has declined uh okay so let me ask the first part the length is determined by again your target audience and your available market share you need to make sure you identify your target audience your target ma uh, market and that will some uh, will determine your product life cycle if you are competing in a niche market the life cycle can be slightly longer because you need to make people aware of what your product actually is if your category is well understood then you can simply enter the market but you will struggle more to gain more customers for the second part saturation saturation simply means that your target audience is fully aware of your product declining usage will only come once better products or products that are available with similar features but a significantly lower price point are available that will start the decline stage not necessarily reaching the maturity stage mm -hmm. thank you utkarsh is asking also um, how are the product lifestyle cycle management's objectives aligned to the company's overall stakeholder strategy good question that's a really good question if everything goes well the two should be in perfect sync mm -hmm. and that is your job as a product manager to make sure that those two are in sync the company may have definitely many products and each with competing priorities but as a product manager you need to make sure you are aware of where your product is in the life cycle and how it can contribute towards your company's goals your company does not want to support a failing product or a product that is consuming too many resources you need to make sure you identify your stage product stage and accordingly convey that to your company's uh, stakeholders for example if you are in the introductory stage you will require more marketing costs that's understandable but make sure you convey that accordingly to your company so that they can uh, you know factor that in into the company's goals good question okay thank you uh, and also karsh is asking what measurements are being captured during growth stage there are many metrics that you can capture many people tend to look at usage or number of customers acquired but i would also want you to focus on your marketing costs your per customer acquisition cost should be going down without doubt because organic growth is what should uh, you know make it a factor for you in the growth stage if you are having organic growth your customer acquisition cost will automatically drop down so those are the metrics that you should focus on mm -hmm. thanks uh, durga prasad is asking since introduction stage is the most important stage of a product what are the different strategies to follow if things are not going in the way expected good question again as a product manager and this ties back to the question that utkarsh asked you need to make sure your product's priorities are aligned with your company's priorities if your product is not progressing the way you want in the introductory stage it means something is wrong which is okay it means the customers are simply not responding to your use case the way you wanted them to maybe there was some gap in analyzing the market in analyzing your feature set or understanding customers needs it's okay we all fail and that's okay the important um, thing is to recognize failure when it happens and stop it before it is too late mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, what are the current levels and trends in key measures uh, or indicators of product and process performance that are important to and directly serve customers? Okay, so again, this depends on your product, but if you have a traditional app or a website, then of course, your customer acquisition, acquisition costs, organic growth are your, uh, should be one of your key drivers. Not only that, uh, you should also be on the lookout for organic mentions of your product in the media. Is media naturally covering your product without you uh, reaching out to them for you know a piece or a coverage of your or a review of your product? If people are naturally curious, organic growth is happening. Those are the metrics that you should be you know really aware of. It's difficult to track those metrics, but there are tools available that you know can help you out. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And Prasant is asking, how innovations disrupt a product at the client stage? Is there any real example for this scenario? Yeah. Innovation is all around us, like uh, the one that I mentioned just now. Uh, the innovation from Apple, the iPhone, killed Nokia or BlackBerry for that matter. Innovation is all around us and products die out in a matter of years, if not less. Your uh, phones is a classic example. Mm -hmm. And then Mohammed is writing, uh, which stages of the PLC does traditional cost accounting consider? But financial products work more than 20 years. Seems some products are not being affected by disruption. What do you think? Uh, all products have a life cycle. Mm -hmm. The life cycle can extend to many decades, but they will live out their utility. And by a product, I mean not your category of software, the company. If today, uh, a company, for example, Oracle or SAP is building a great suite of, you know, your financial uh, accounting products. Tomorrow, there will be a new competitor. Uh, I think Zendesk or one of those uh, examples is a great, I am not, yeah, those are a great examples of product that even though the category exists, the product uh, you know is from a different company so the category may not die out but the product will shift to a different uh, company mm -hmm. thank you ka is asking do you see any major difference uh, in the plc between uh, working as a product manager for a physical product and working as an it product manager oh yeah there is tremendous difference uh, physical products are especially hard you need to make sure that you really understand your customer. The acquisition costs are really high. The manufacturing costs are, of course, high. With IT products, you have the luxury of offering premium versions, like I mentioned earlier. You don't have that luxury with your physical products. So, yes, there is a significant difference between the two. And then, thanks. Nikhil is asking um, how to involve your customers around your product. Do we have to release new features to our product or offer free subscriptions to them? So you, two different things. You don't need to constantly re, uh, release new features. You want to save some of your best features for a new product version. And subscription, yeah, that's up to you. A freemium version can definitely evolve into a subscription model. Mm -hmm. um, Ashish is asking, how to know whether the metrics we set to know the transition to next stage is to be accurate? For example, from introduction to growth stage. Yeah. That is a, a tricky question. There are metrics available all around us, but metrics can be misleading. Ashish, you are right. You need to make sure that you have a suite of metrics that you're tracking. Don't rely on any one metric, especially from introduction to growth. Like I mentioned earlier, keep an eye out on your per customer acquisition cost. If that is significantly going down, that is a clear example of organic growth and entering the growth stage. Mm -hmm. And Utkarsh again is asking a question. What are the boundaries of the scope? When do we stop developing this product during the introductory stage? Yeah, again, the scope, great question. Scope versus non-scope definition is at the heart of product management. 
as a product manager you need to sometimes uh, you know take difficult calls on what to keep in and what to keep out you cannot keep on developing a product forever at some point you need to stop and call it my you know product that i want to release to the market how do you decide that you look at your competition you look at your market you do your customer interviews your surveys make sure you understand what your customer wants and give them that give them five really good features than 100 average features thanks uh, jagadish is asking can we say as a pm should we concentrate more on growth stage and maturity stage more than others especially when we are offered this role to an existing product which is already in the market okay if you are already if you have been offered to lead a product that is already in the market then your job is not to choose which stage you want to better manage your job is to identify which stage the product is in if it is in the growth stage you need to manage it like you manage a growth stage product if it's in the maturity stage you manage it accordingly you will not have the luxury of deciding which stage you have to manage you will have the difficult task of uh identifying the right stage mm mm-hmm. thanks and chetan kapoor is asking how can one leverage the phase of a product life cycle to their advantage during their job search interview also is that a factor you recommend one should consider while choosing their first company okay in the interview stage um yes it is a definite factor managing products at different stages is not uh, easy if you are entering a company that is offering you to uh, manage a product that is at the maturity stage or even entering the decline stage you need to be careful about that opportunity because like i mentioned success and failure both rest on the shoulders of a product manager and if you are entering into a new job you will obviously be judged by the first product that you manage and the product life cycle is what it is you cannot do anything about it so if you are entering into a product that is you know about to you know lose your customers then be very careful about choosing that opportunity Mm-hmm. And one more question from Utkarsh: uh, Which scope and stage have the most effect on of the disruptive strategies? Which scope? Sorry. Which scope and stage have the most effect uh, of the disruptive strategies? Disruptive strategies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think so if I understand the question correctly, mm-hmm. if we're talking about disruption from your competitors, then. that is definitely your decline stage your competitors will come up with better products more disruptive features and your product will enter into the decline stage your job is to identify when that is happening and pull the plug like i mentioned earlier do not fall into the trap of marginal utility do not think that if i add this feature or that feature i can extend my product life cycle it can be to a certain extent but the marginal utility will drop sharply so be careful of that okay and the last question is coming from shashank jain should a pm target an established product or venture into high risk high award in the innovation product yeah should a pm target an established product or venture into high risk high award innovation product that's the question <laughs> do you understand the question <laughs> yeah 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 so i think Yes, it's a good question, Shashank. Uh, you do not need to enter into a, a high risk, high reward product if you are not comfortable with it. Every product has its own advantages and disadvantages. You need to make sure you understand your comfort with the product. If you feel uh, like the question earlier that you are interviewing for a company and that product is offering. Uh, is in a decline or a maturity stage then be careful of that they may entice you with you know oh you know this if you add new features you will have high risk but high reward it is easy to fall into that trap but be careful secondly if you are launching a new product category that is simply not heard of in the market you will be entering a niche audience and you need to set the targets and metrics accordingly mm-hmm. Thank you so much yeah for the answers yeah 